We've all been there before, starting to feel sick, maybe just in need of a checkup, but you get to the doctor, end up sitting in the waiting room way beyond your appointment time. New studies shed some light on how much time and how much money Americans waste while waiting to see the doctor. Joining us now, the Newsmax health editor and co-author of Da Vinci's Baby Boomer Survival Guide, Nick Tate. So maybe some people right now are in the waiting room watching Nick and I talk about the fact that you're in the waiting room. And sometimes it's a, these are long wait times, sure. Nick. Is, is sure. it getting worse? It is getting worse. I mean, the numbers show that they've been growing over time. The reason is that there are doctor shortages in many areas of the country. So not only do you wait weeks or months, depending on where you live, to get a doctor appointment, but when you get there, you're in the waiting room for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, sometimes as long as a couple hours. And then they do a new trick. They put you into a patient room where you sit for another 30 minutes and <laughs> you wait. Well, this new study has actually put a dollar figure on that mm -hmm. growing wait time. It estimates that in addition to the copay you pay to your doctor and, and, and any other care you need that you pay for through insurance and out of pocket, it costs about $43 in lost productivity, that's time on the road, time away from work. So it's costing us time and it's costing us money. Well, I mean, the population, we're getting larger in the United States. There's mm -hmm. fewer people that are uninsured. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do about maybe the shortage of doctors out there? Is there efforts right now at universities to maybe get more people into medicine? The problem is not the number of medical students who are signing up. In fact, we're, we're experiencing record levels of students graduating from medical schools. The problem is that Congress has set a cap on the the amount of money that goes to, to spend on training programs. These are residencies that doctors, medical students must undergo before they can go into private practice. There's a limit, so every year there are hundreds of med school students who graduate and they don't have those training programs that allow them to practice. And that's what's artificially holding down the number of doctors that are out there. There are some programs that are available. Some programs, will, the federal government will give you a payback on your medical school loans if you'll practice in certain areas where they need doctors and there are efforts in Congress to lift that cap on residencies, but at this point, nothing is really moving that, that uh, needle forward. And I'm finding more often I'm getting a physician's assistant or a nurse to That's help right. us. Uh, what advice do you have for people to try to minimize these wait times? Well, there are a couple things you can do. First of all, you should book your appointment first thing in the morning once you get it, because that will allow you to get in before there's time for the doctor to get behind. Second thing, you can book right after lunch when they will, that you'll be on time. Um, the third thing is just call ahead like you would at a restaurant which overbooks mm -hmm. or the airline which overbooks and ask are you is the doctor running late if yeah. the doctor's running late then you know his office staff or her office staff will probably let you know that you can stray in a little later this is a trick that will that will make some of my doctor friends angry but the other thing you can do if you've really spent a couple hours in a doctor's office waiting and you're somebody who is an independent contractor who bills by the hour send the office a bill for your time that you've mm. spent there. You're not likely to get a check, but they might think twice before they make you wait a long time the next time. Yeah, a couple of those docs are going to get you for that one. They are indeed. You know, like you're at a restaurant, you get the GPS, the little device, yeah, it buzzes, sure. maybe send you a text. I don't I, know. I like that idea. Uh, let's get into the weeds uh, about the health care plans. Uh, the Democrats have got their proposals. We're right. starting to see some of the Republican proposals, and that's always a criticism. Mm -hmm. The left will counter, well, you don't have your own plan. They can't say that anymore. Jeb Bush has got a pretty definitive idea of what he wants to do with health care if he's elected in January of 2017. That's right. You know, up until this point, and we should say that Obamacare is one of the reasons that there are these doctor shortages. There are more regulations and many doctors are moving out of, of practice for, for the reasons that have to do with the Affordable Care Act. The Republicans, it's not true that the Republicans and the alternative plans have not existed. The Republicans have been proposing them. They just haven't gotten behind a single plan mm -hmm. that people can understand. The, the Obamacare law is enormously, fantastically complicated, and so to take it apart and put it back together in a way that works for people, make sure you get insurance, high quality care at the lowest possible cost, people with pre-existing conditions covering them is not easy. Jeb Bush has come up with what I think is the most definitive and comprehensive plan that we've seen to date. In fact, it would repeal many of the aspects of Obamacare that people don't like, but preserves things that people do like. It moves away from a kind of... Uh, federally uh, dictated plan that's from the top down gives more power to states to make decisions on things like Medicaid and gives individual consumers tax credits to buy their own insurance. At the same time, it bounces the individual mandate that not many people like requiring folks to have insurance and the employer mandate, which fully kicks in next year, that would require major, medium and large size companies to provide insurance. So I think that this plan is going to become the next focus for not just Jeb Bush and his campaign, for all the Republicans. What do we like? What 
don't we like? It really is the first time we're seeing a comprehensive plan that would replace and not just simply repeal Obamacare. Well, all eyes, too, on Dr. Ben Carson, obviously being in the health care industry, sure. and also Donald Trump. Have we heard any specifics from those two political camps? We have. Uh, uh, Donald Care, as he calls it. Oh, um, no. Yes. <laughs> um, he, he, he initially said it would be uh, something really fantastic, but then he followed up and gave some details. Yeah. Actually, the truth is that uh, uh, Jeb Bush's plan borrows from some of the plans that we've heard from Ben Carson, uh, who likes the idea of uh, tax credits to help people buy their insurance. Trump has talked about tax credits, allowing people to buy insurance across state lines. Even some of the uh, other players, like Senator Bill Cassidy uh, from Louisiana, who's introduced a formal plan that moves away from the kind of regulation heavy law that Obamacare is toward driving more consumer choice, providing tax credits, creating new health savings accounts that would allow you to put thousands of dollars into account tax-free and use that money to pay for your own insurance, which may, would make people, I think, be a little more politically savvy, a little more financially savvy, because they're spending their own money and they're not just worried about, well, my insurance is going to cover it, all I have to worry about is the copay. So I think that Jeb's plan does, in fact, borrow from some of the other plans that we've heard and the ideas we've heard from not only Carson and Trump, but members of Congress. And, you know, even there are some pieces that come from Obamacare. It's not quite Obamacare light. But there are some plans in Obamacare uh, segments that people seem to like, and the Bush plan, as the others, reflects those things, pays for them a little differently, but mm -hmm. covers people in similar ways. We really haven't heard a lot about health care initially sure. in the Republican campaign. I think it's going to become more and more of an issue. It's going to be a huge issue in the general election, especially with such contrasting plans. Nick Tate, we've got to go. Thank you so much for all that you do. Stay tuned. The fastest 60 minutes of news. The hard line continues.